Good morning, Mr. Byers. Good morning, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Williams, you came today. They They say a person who enjoys work never has a job. Good. Goodbye. Good morning, Mr. I look forward to every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's really hard to estimate uh, the impact that Brother Joel has had on this school. I don't think we can ever overestimate it. And that's, what technique? A ship of pearl. What is that? He's teaching freshmen again this year, and I think he got every kid whose dad he had taught, he kind of wanted him in that classroom. It's really a joy to watch him, uh, you know, just to bring Christ's love into their lives. He's that presence every single day in this school. Brother Joel personifies our Lasallian charism and the tradition of Christian Brothers High School. He is the glue that holds our community together. He's up early in the morning opening up the school, and he's also up late at night shutting it down. And throughout the day, he's always helping the students who just don't have a smile on their face or who look like they need somebody to talk to. I'll get up at 4.30 and go over and open the building and get the lights on, pick up the trash off the parking lot, rush back in, open the offices, put the newspapers in the library, eat breakfast, brush my teeth, take those pills, Go to class. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. My mother was from Lucy, Tennessee, and my dad was from Bogachita, Mississippi. I was in the second grade in 1952, Lord Sacred Heart, and that was the beginning for me as far as a religious life. The Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, I, I thought they were, we liked them, they were good teachers. And then at the end of the eighth grade, I had begged to go to Catholic High because all the, most of the boys were going to Catholic High. No, you're going to the brothers. And I loved it. I, mother at times said, I'm just gonna put a tent over there. All you do is go to school, you're never home. It, it, it consumed me and I saw myself as a brother. I loved the brothers. Spring of 1964, I entered on my birthday, June 22nd. 94 boys entered my postulancy in 1964. There are seven of us left. For me, it was heaven. I've kept notes ever since I joined the brothers. And I saw a page where I had written, so many times you get to a place you have to leave. I get to stay. And I have felt that way for 50 years. I started keeping writing these notebooks when I entered, this is from June. Lord, help me on this venture. Tonight, I am totally beat. And so uh, that was my first day in the Brothers. So I have kept these things uh, for the 50 years. And the one that I'm writing is right there on that bedstead, right? It's, I wrote in it September the 16th, six in the morning. CBHS celebrates my golden today with mass and a reception. It was a breakfast yesterday, luncheon today. I see it mass on Sunday. A bit overwhelming, and I'm enjoying it. But I'm daunted by all the people coming to congratulate me. God be blessed. I'm thankful for all of it, the 50 years. I came here to Christian Brothers High School in 1969. The only thing that separated me from the boy was a habit, because I looked younger than they did. So I made my final vows there in 1971. And so this is a significant room for me. I took this, this vow, Most Holy Trinity, Father, I promise to go wherever I may be sent. Now sometimes they said, I promise to go wherever I may be sent in Memphis. <laughs> they think I slipped those words. Mary, Queen of Victory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Another part of, of my daily life is the, uh, is the rosary. Every day I say I deck it with the boys. It came to pass as Jesus drew near to Jericho. When my wife was pregnant, he told my wife that, that she would be in his daily rosary uh, throughout the length of her pregnancy. And the amount of peace that that provided us, uh, I, I just, it's beyond words. I say it in the car, you know, I don't really accept it. Cause of accident, rosary beads got tangled up in the steering wheel. I don't think the cops would accept that. But uh, the, it, again, it's consecrating the day. The whole idea is your whole day. Give, give it to God. Mr. Schobel, y'all are seniors who let you become seniors. You did? God.
Brother Joel cares about every person that he meets. Every student that comes on that campus, he makes a point to get to know. And he overwhelms some of those students when they come on campus that he knows them and their family better than they do. That's someone's precious child. Always remember that. He's not a number. If you, if you value him, and how do you do that? You call him by name. You speak to him. You show interest. You pat him on the shoulder. You shake his hand. You love all the boys, but let most of your love and attention go to the ones who are poor, who are not attractive, who are disobedient. Put most of your time on them. That's the one that, that needs you. That boy will come back. You do not know when you're keeping a boy from taking his life. You don't know that because you spoke to him at a critical time. You put your arm around him. How are you doing? Yeah, I call him the face of Catholicism in Memphis because everybody knows Brother Joel and he's genuine. He cares about it. He remembers anniversaries of deaths and weddings and anniversaries of ordinations or whatever might happen. He just is a loving, caring person of everyone he meets. These, these are memorial cards of when I go to the wakes. I call them on the anniversary and say, well, I remembered you at Mass today. Here is, you know, Sean McKeel, the golfer. Well, this is his mother's, so I will call him on that, on that day or something. Just as a it's, a, it's a little touch. His friend, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who wrote this poem, wrote to him, no tell how many thousands of kids he's taught over the years that he's, he's been at Christian Brothers and he still remembers some specific things and that's just a, a great gift that God has given him, blessed him with and that's why he's been as popular as he is with all the students. This is the book that lists the people that I taught and it, I have had now with this year 6,656 students. My first class in Memphis 69 and 70. And here's Tom Sullivan, and he's on our board now. I can just go through and find somebody. Steve Cook, his daddy was worked at Goldsmiths. Malvisi, we called him Luigi. I really think Chris that there are some people in our lives that, you know, God brings within our lives um, for a reason. And uh, Brother Joel is one of those people. So in the like in 1980s, I started writing down the names of people to ask me to pray for them. And I remember them. I'm looking at some of these names every single day. Again, not to change God, but to change me, to make me more attentive of them and not just treat people like, uh, like uh, things. <laughs> He's everywhere that he's asked to go. He's on our school boards. He gives retreats for men for weekends. He gives talks to the Curcio people for retreat, spiritual weekends, marriage encounters, pep talks, uh, whatever he can do, encouraging people in life, uh, value and virtue talks. And I am back to being organist again for the St. Louis Choir. I have no business doing that, but I love that. If there's a man on campus who deserves a bit of time to rest, it's Brother Joel. And yet every day, after each lunch period, Brother will be in the hallway. Uh, he'll take five minutes and, and quickly tidy up the hallways and then go on about the rest of his day. It's ama he's amazing. After school, at the bell tower, I direct traffic at the bell tower. And I've only been hit twice in 41 years. You can't think about Christian Brothers without thinking about Brother Joel now, yeah, and his arms stretched out over the parking lot. All right, goodbye, buddy. Have a good one. Yes, the brother's life is empty. I have no children. I have no spouse. There's nobody on the planet for whom I'm number one. That's, that's, a, that's an empty thing. There's no legacy as far as material wealth or something. My material wealth will be put in garbage bags and go to the dumpster. but. On the other side, I have all of these folks that, with whom I have been close. My, I'm allowed to put my foot in the door of a lot of people's lives, but if I weren't a brother, I would never. They'd say, Get, call the police. <laughs> Get him out of here. There's a creep in our neighborhood. But to have that, I'm the richest person there is. 
Hey, brother Joel, this is Jarvis Greer. How you doing, man? 50 years. Well, oh, I'm making sure that my tie, I've got my top button button. See? Yeah, it's button. I'll pull it up for you. But just know that I have remembered that ever since I set foot on the campus. Ooh, goodness gracious. Many years ago now, 1975 graduate, and you still look good. And here's for 50 more years of Brother Joel at CBHS. Brother Joel, thanks for remembering my name and know that we will always remember yours. Thank you, Brother Joel, for your service and for your example. Thank you for reminding me that whenever I have the good fortune to see you and to speak to you, I am in the holy presence of God. Thank you for everything you've done for me, for this school. You are a special person. Brother Joel, on behalf of uh, my family, uh, I just want to say thank you for all you've done for us. Uh, you're a wonderful man. Uh, you've made a big difference, not only in my life, uh, but in the life of my son, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you.